Hi everybody, it's Julie and I'm so excited about this month's video tutorial. Um, I'm making this waterless snow globe. I collect these ideas on Pinterest like crazy and I love making these to decorate my home. But it's a waterless snow globe using a canning jar and these awesome show topper lids by Cosmo Cricut. Now they come in different designs, but they're designed to fit these wide mouth canning jars and they have a hook inside so you can maybe dangle their mini mobile from the inside if you want. And they also have different tops, like they, some have knobs, some have clips. I'm working with one that has a clip. And to create my little scene, I'm going to die cut a circle that's going to go into the bottom of the jar. So I just tossed a circle die that fit inside the jar, so then I knew that whatever I die cut, it was going to fit. And uh, so I didn't measure. That's how I measure. <laughs> So now I'm going to take some craft cardstock and start building my scene. And I'm lining up the die uh, along that score line there because I want to push his legs just past that edge and line that up on my big shot cutting platform. And you see where I'm lining up the edges of those plates? And it's just so that it doesn't go past that score line so that it won't cut beyond that point. And here you can see exactly what I'm talking about. When I remove the die, you know, and take it out of the plates, you can see where it didn't cut past those score lines because of the way I positioned everything on the cutting pads. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut away the negative portions that I don't need on my little guy, I'm kind of flipping him around, trying to figure out the best way <laughs> to get in there and do that. And you can see now he has a little tab. And I did this with some birch trees. These dies are all by Savvy Stamps. And I thought these birch trees would look awesome with this particular stag. And I'm just gonna angle cut those a little bit. So in case I have any overhang, it's not gonna extend beyond the edges of that circle. So I actually die cut those uh, birch trees twice so I could get like three birch trees in a row and then I'm going to go ahead and embellish my stag. I've got some tape runner that I use to put on the tabs there that are going to get mounted to that white circle and then I'm just going to embellish him really quickly with a gemstone because I could have used you know you can use stickles but I wanted something that would just like be dry already so I didn't have to wait around and I had so much fun with this I just could not wait to finish it and I love that it took me less than an hour once I had my idea in mind so I'm going to go ahead and put these in place and I'm kind of futzing around a little bit with the position of the deer and where I want him showing against the background of the tree so luckily with that stamp runner you can kind of um, you have some wiggle room there so you can kind of lift up and reposition until you get them where you want them. You could use stronger tape if you needed to but um, this works pretty well. And then I'm going to slip that down inside my jar. You can see that all fits nicely and they are flopping around just a little bit. Um, that's okay because we're going to use some Epsom salts and I love using Epsom salts for the snow in my waterless snow globes because it operates like sand. So I can use the, the weight of the Epsom salts to kind of keep those guys propped up um, the way I want them. Now, if you needed to, if you're using buffalo snow, um, that's too lightweight to really prop those guys up. So you might want to put a little strip of acetate that connects the deer to the trees to kind of help keep everything stabilized and propped up. But for me on this particular scene, the Epsom salts worked awesome. And now I'm going to take these little tiny pom-poms and the pearl thread to create some snowfall. I just thought it would be fun and I wanted to try it. Now in hindsight, um, I don't know that I would do this with my tall trees and I'll explain why in a minute. But anyway, I'm threading um, through the pom-pom at the bottom twice and then each one that I add, I'm threading, looping it through and going twice and that kind of helps keep them in place so they, don't, they can slide still a little bit if you need to position them, but they're not just gonna fall down um, the thread if you loop through them twice. So now I've got these all these little strands that I made to create my snowfall and I cut another white circle same size as the one I used for the base and then I just folded it in quarters so I could find the center point punch a hole and then cut a slit and that's going to fit right over the hook there because I'm mounting these um, little strands of pom-poms in a different fashion to create my snowfall. So I wanted them to, to reach outward, uh, dangle outward closer to the walls, the inside walls of the jar instead of at the hook. So that's why I had to kind of modify what I was going to, the way I was going to dangle these little strands. So I'm just kind of mounting them a little bit outward from the hook there and where I know the hook is going to go. And I'm just using glue dots because it's quick and it's easy. And if I change my mind, you know, I can pull it up. I mean, I know they're really sticky and they're going to hold, but I do have some fudge room there if I need to. So now um, you can kind of see how I've got them all in place. And then that's how they're going to dangle there. Can you see that? 
<laughs> it's turning out so cute I just can't take it and now I'm gonna mount that piece to the inside of my lid and again I'm just gonna use some glue dots because I think um, having that temporarily affixed inside there is going to be a great way to um, give me some flexibility if I change my mind and decide, no, nah, you know, I don't want to do that. I'll, I'll put it in a different jar. So I'm going to slip that right there over the hook. And then I can go ahead and uh, mount that or screw that on top of the jar there. But you can see there the little pom-poms are hanging down. I'm just kind of detangling them a little bit. What I didn't anticipate, though, was that my scene is so tall that those strands kind of got tangled up. So I had to, in the end, tilt my jar a little bit to kind of get the the strands loose from the trees. They got kind of caught in the trees. So I think in the future, if I do one of these, I will have a much shorter scene so that the pom-poms don't get caught. But here you can see how I kind of had to tilt the jar to get the pom-poms to kind of get untangled from the, the trees and hang down properly. In the meantime, I'm going to decorate the topper part. And I just die cut a B from the Merry and Bright die cut words from the Essentials by Ellen collection. And I just did that out of a scrap of black cardstock. And then I also used Savvy's Merry die to die cut that from some Cosmo Cricut glitter sheets. And these are self-adhesive. And then to line them up, I'm just gonna take a piece of that post-it tape and create you know, just a visual line there that's gonna help me. You can use a pencil line if you wanted to, but I wanted to make sure I didn't mount these too low because this piece is gonna get slipped into the clip. And if you have too much bulk, you're not gonna be able to get it down into the clip or you know, sliding it into the clip could ruin um, the pieces that you're mounting on that. So you do need to allow or pre-plan a little bit um, for how far down you're mounting any extra layers there. So I'm just using that post-it tape there and my grid mat to help me line those up. And I peeled back the liner paper on the glitter letters so that I could kind of get them tacked in place. And then once I was sure I was happy with that, um, they're all lined up straight. I kind of debated going wonky um, all over the place, but I think in the end this you know kind of looked a lot better. So now I'm just going to go in and remove the liner papers from each of the letters and press them firmly into place. And I just did this onto a, some scrap watercolor paper I had laying around because I think it I liked that creamy combination, um, the color there with the white of the jar and and everything else. So I've got a mixture of whites, hues of whites. So now I'm just going to take that little word B and get some mono um, adhesive, that mono uh, multi-glue, and just go ahead and get that on the back, just little droplets because it's such a fine detail cut, and mount that into place, and then I'm ready to go ahead and slip that in there. And, you know, I don't know if you can see, but that's why I needed to allow a little bit of gap along the bottom of that piece there. So now I'm going to go ahead and take a bow. This is some ribbon I had. I just had this piece of ribbon. It was perfect for making a bow and I just stitched a little red jingle bell I picked up at the craft store there. I was like, oh, these are so cute. I've actually, I think I've had them for a year and never did anything with them last year, but I was like, oh, that'll be perfect right here on my bow. <laughs> and then use a, a larger glue dot there to secure it to the jar and then it's all finished and i just think this is the cutest thing you could put a gift card in an envelope and tuck that up there um, you could put a photo on the top there i just think they are the funnest things thanks for watching